A digital inclusion agenda is important for public libraries because um, libraries are, especially, especially regional public libraries, um, they can't be seen only as repositories for books um, or even as just the place where one goes to get knowledge. Um, they are um, connectors for the community, they are a place for people to come together and to amplify the, the culture and activity of that region. So digital inclusion is important because without that component we would be missing out on all the sort of points of engagement um, that are possible when people can't be in the same room together. And in a state as big as Queensland with some of these library networks servicing huge geographical areas, um, having digital tools to be able to connect with their communities is absolutely vital. The digital inclusion project component of Gladstone Reads was really about increasing the community's awareness of the digital tools that would enable them to, um, uh, to be part of a reading culture and to help the library staff of the public library network in the Gladstone area um, to be able to understand those tools themselves and then be able to share them with patrons that are coming in to use the library. We're entering into one of the sort of the first periods in history where authors have a direct one-on-one -on -one relationship with their reader, readers that's not mediated by a supply chain and not focused on having an actual physical thing that is sold in bookstores. Now you suddenly have a space in which everyone is standing right next to each other effectively. You can speak directly to a readership, they can speak directly back to you. It opens up a lot of opportunities for writers, particularly regional writers. The great advantage of the internet is that it does democratise that a whole bunch. The library professional development workshops focused on building up expertise and knowledge around this idea of the amplified author and how that impacts not just authorship but also readership because it's about the connection between writers and readers and the crucial role that libraries play in fostering that relationship and supporting that relationship now and into the future with emerging technologies and emerging business models. There was a very savvy understanding amongst most of the librarians that the delineation between the production and consumption of literature has been disrupted uh, by digital technology and emerging, emerging business models like fanfic, like you know, many ways where literary cultural products are being produced and consumed in this wonderful creative maelstrom of participation. And there was a, a great exchange of ideas uh, around the, the, the type of information that we brought and how it was relevant to, to libraries throughout Gladstone and to readers throughout Gladstone and writing communities throughout Gladstone. The workshop would step participants through the various uh, types of technology underpinning various reading devices and, and how those different features and functionality carry different forms of narrative uh, more or less effectively. It wasn't just about the practical training, it was about how we conceive of ourselves as authors and locate ourselves within a marketplace or a readership or an art form. It's crucial to align digital technologies and business models with bricks and mortar resources in the development of reading, writing, culture, because re readers are at the centre of the reading and writing culture. Authors and libraries and booksellers and everyone else exist in service of the reader. And readers need to be able to read how suits them best. It's the reader's choice. So it's crucial that there is a suite of services and an aligned body of knowledge uh, within library around all of those different reading options. I was basically in charge of uh, creating digital content uh, and then also um, instructing people how to use that digital content. So I created the Read Around Gladstone website uh, as well as the videos on the Read Around Gladstone website that showed people how to set up uh, their own blog. Uh, and then I went to Gladstone to teach two workshops about blogging, uh, first to the library um, technicians, I suppose you would call them. Um, and then uh, to the Gladstone public. So the workshops were really about um, letting people know 
what are the types of blogs that are out there, what are the types of genres that they cover, how they can generate their own ideas, what is um, considered a good format for different types of blogging, that sort of thing. And so what seemed to get the librarians really interested and engaged was seeing those examples of the whole heap of different ways that people use blogs, whether it's in food, whether um, they're talking about, you know, it's, it's not just about writing or about books, it's, a, it's about a whole heap of different genres of stuff. Um, and that was again also the thing that excited the, the public who came to the public workshop. And so there were a couple of probably about three to four older people, I'd say in their sort of 60s or older, um, who, who were a little bit overwhelmed by it. So even though we sort of had those step-by-step -step videos there, it, it seemed like a lot to take in. And I think those are the ones that are really going to be supported by the librarians that we trained because they're going to need a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more um, brainstorming kind of thing to get used to and comfortable with the idea of using something like a blog. The thing that I find a lot in those particular workshops is that you get a lot of blank face uh, where you're not quite sure whether or not people are <laughs> Uh, freaking out or or are just concentrating really hard and uh, fortunately in this instance it seemed like they were concentrating really hard because they came up and asked a lot of questions at the end as well. With the librarians um, that was that was very positive, they were very energetic, very excited. Um, they responded really really well so they they were um, they really got into all of the exercises that we did um, you know writing their own stuff um, doing a little brainstorming things um, and so they all of those those people there seem to come out of it quite energised. I think that the projects had a really big impact on the way that young people engage with the library. One of the really good things is that Early on in the Read Around Gladstone project, we managed to get some um, iPads and we got e-readers. Now, a few people were using e-readers initially, but not particularly, not many young people. They do read on their phones, um, but because we got that equipment, we were actually able to encourage them to have a go, just to give it a try. And it also was great because all the staff were able to practice and feel really comfortable. So we could say, look, this is actually how it works. Not necessarily the iPads, everyone knows how the iPads work, but this is how it works when you connect it with our technology that we've got here. So for example, we use BorrowBox and so people can find the eBooks on the catalogue and just download them, but they've got to have BorrowBox downloaded first. So by having that extra technology, they, they were, we were able to feel really comfortable promoting it and talking to young people about it. Of course, that's 18 months or so ago, and in that time, everything changes so quickly now. Everyone's got e-readers and everyone's reading their books on their phones and um, devices. We've also been doing quite a big project where we go into the high schools and talk to them about how they can access the resources they need via the web page and the e-resources that are available. And therefore, they can access the um, library 24 hours a day as long as they've um, got the technology and they've got their library card. So all of those things coming together has meant that they're using the library in, yeah, there's a lot more young people using the library. Yeah, I do feel that it's um, built capacity a bit. Uh, several of us went to the blogging workshop for, uh, for staff. Um, learning about Amplified also put in a lot of perspective for staff members as well. Having the initial video that Human made with the um, kids made us realise that we needed something for the teenage portion of our audience, so we managed to... Um, We've got two anime clubs going, one here at Gladstone and one at Agnes Water Library. And I think that's added our capacity and the fact that we, it's added knowledge of, of various things and how teenagers think and stuff like that. Um, we also had um, an attempt at a couple of book clubs um, for teenagers. Uh, they've sort of folded, but I think the, the kids that were interested are uh, still coming to the library, so I think that's a great thing. Um, and it also, again, built our capacity in how would we run the book club and all that sort of thing.